I mean, I just. You do. Sure, yeah, okay. the, the reason why I'm asking, I mean, I'm a big Spectrum fan, and yeah. um, you know, I used to have Spectrum, still got my Spectrum. But then to see a Spectrum in the Twitter, I know you had it uh, last year, but uh, I want to see yeah, this person. That, that was a proper Spectrum doing it. This is now a, um, a completely built from scratch um, and 100% timing accurate ZX Spectrum doing it, which is it's the first, and so far, it's still the only one. Okay, so. So what? So this here isn't a spectrum, but it is a spectrum. Oh, no, it is a spectrum. It's it was um, it was developed to um, in an attempt to under, to understand how the spectrum's custom chip, the ULA, works. Right. So this is the ULA exposed into components. What you can now see is the ULA in components. Yes. Right. Fantastic. Okay. So the rest of it here, the the Z80, the um, 32k of memory. Um, 16K ROM and 16K of memory is as you'd find inside a, a ZX Spectrum. Yeah. And, and this bit there is a hastily fashioned on Friday edge connector <laughs> so we can sort of connect it up. And we learnt an awful lot about how the ULA worked because of course it's not made anymore. Hmm. And if Spectrum's died because of the ULA fault you have to find a surrogate for it hmm. you can't replace that. So it was really important to do this exercise. And we learnt a lot. Um, there were some things that still weren't understood. Yeah. The ULA. Um, so this was reverse engineered though, so you didn't have books or diagrams or no, and documentation nothing, no, to go off? Um, only our experience as programmers yeah. writing games in the day and, and writing emulators you know, more recently than that. Um, but I still want to answer some of the other questions about the ULA and a lot of people were saying, you know, write it down in the form of a book. You know, so, um, but some of the things were still conjecture, Yeah. so I was lucky to find somebody who um, de-encapsulated de it using some horrible acids <laughs> um, and put it under a microscope uh, working up a, in a lab mm. detail um, and then they sent me that, that picture on the wall there well not the picture they sent me <laughs> yeah. the, that's annotated by me um, through um, many many months of work so basically a photograph of the silicon I converted that then into um, a transistor circuit diagram it's 2.1 meters by 2.1 meters <laughs> and then a logic diagram um, and then wrote all that up then in in the book. So um, now we know everything there is to know about the spectrum. Right. So, like you said, so if the if the original ULAs become, you know, they corrode, end up useless, we c you could still remanufacture one. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And, and people have done that. There's um, a ULA now on um, the Open Core's website, written by um, sort of a friend, colleague, fellow hacker um, called Miguel from um, who's in Spain. So he's he's open sourced that up and, and, and people do the information from the book and. Mm -hmm. tinkering. So, so yeah, um, and as part of my um, uh, work sort of doing this, after I did that, I created a circuit which had a CPLD on it and plugged that into a, a Spectrum and replaced the ULA to prove it was, yeah. was doable. Um, and I let somebody else then do the hard work of actually producing them, but uh, mm -hmm. I did the academic bit. So effectively you could, you, could, you could build a whole Spectrum from scratch then without any original components? Indeed, well there's an example of yeah. it. Um, and this here is um, the prototype for a spectrum and a joystick. So I'll take you through what we have. Um, we have a, a memory board. It's got a, a single 2 meg memory chip on there. This is the analog output for the sound in the video. And then this chip here is a programmable gator or an FPGA, which um, is running a, an image that's been intended for an ASIC, which is um, another custom device, mm. basically. And you can have that mass-produced um, at a very low cost, as long as you've got about 2,000 pounds, you know, mm. of upfront fee. Yeah. So, effectively, this is a ROM chip, a CPU, ULA, so basically that's the Spectrum, mm. that's the Spectrum ROM, and that's the Spectrum RAM. So three right. chips yeah. will fit inside that, and then you'd have Oh, the, I see, um, right, so you could, so, so you joystick. could, yeah, do a Spectrum and Like the Commodore yeah. 64, you know, DT64. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty much the same thing, I mean, if you looked at the circuit diagrams of those two things, they would be mm. indistinguishable, but the magic's what, what happens inside yeah. the custom chip, so... Again, that's proof of understanding the whole design. Yeah, yeah. And there are um, there are some, some certain programs that we can run on this that um, demonstrate that it is 100% time compatible. Yeah. Um, but um, they don't often show us. So this at the bottom here is is um, my friend Dylan's mm. is, is designed and is um, basically selling. It's um, an Ethernet. Adapter, basically 100 meg Ethernet adapter for the Spectrum. 
Right. So you can plug that in, you connect to the internet, there's, there's a handful of servers around there that have got lots of Spectrum games on, so you don't need to um, um, download anything or yeah. any, to get your cassette player out, etc. You can just turn it on, browse a menu of games and off you go. That's excellent. Which is, which is fabulous, so it's bringing the ZX Spectrum into the yeah. 21st century. So Dylan, this is this is what you you manufacture this part yeah, of it, this, the, the this board, board yeah. Here, the Spectrum S, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and is this something you're selling? Is yeah, yeah, it is. It is for sale. Rich Mellow our op software is actually selling it online. Right. So it, it is available now, and there's about how many did I made? I've probably made about 150 or so. Right. <laughs> so an excellent idea. So yeah. you can just so you can use the internet as a, yeah. as a source. Yeah. So you've got like a network file system. Someone's done a. A piece of software to bridge World of Spectrum, the, the actual game yeah. archive of World of Spectrum, so you can just grab tape file. The, the, you can use the, the Spectrum as tape emulation to load tape files directly off World of Spectrum. I mean, I mean and it's going to be so fast as well because they're so small files. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a couple of seconds, and that's yeah. it. And it's even faster if you're on a LAN. So yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's very quick. Yeah. That's excellent. So I'm going to guess then you've got the Twitter example here. You can also go on and do other stuff. That's, yeah, you know, not just it's games. got a socket library which oh. which resembles very strongly the socket library you'll find on a Mac or Unix or Windows or whatever. So if any programmer who's used to writing code that uses uses the basic socket library can immediately write code for this. Right. Because there's, I've written a C library, so you, you can use the Z88DK to inter interface with that. Write it to see, or you can write it in assembler. There's also basic, there's also an interface to basic as well. So basic programmers aren't left out of the cockpit. Excellent. This menu here, for instance, is written in ZX Basic and it reads the files as it reads to generate this menu here. It's just doing a read on a file using the basic commands to read files. So it doesn't matter what, what you program, all the popular languages used in the spe on the spectrum can be used for writing stuff that uses the network. Right. And on ZX Basic, it's like three lines of code to connect to another oh, yeah. server and send and receive data. Yeah. So it's, it's quite straightforward to use. So I could dig out my ad address book program I wrote in 1986 yeah. or something uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and make it internet enabled, that's cloud right, storage. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can even write a server, it supports up to four TCP sockets at a time. So I've got a little example basic program where you can have four clients connect to this one basic pro It's very slow, mind you, but it does work. <laughs> so you make client server programming games yeah, and... Yeah. yeah, you can do that. We have a... Uh, I have a multiplayer game here as well called Spec Tank, which uh, at the moment is set up for up to four players. There's a there's a little minimal server, which does... The, the server at the moment doesn't run on the Spectrum because the map, map data is a little bit too big. But the server's written so it will run on a classic machine, it's all integer maths and everything like that, so it doesn't demand much of the processor. And the clients will run on the spectrum, so they, do, they deal with all the graphics mm -hmm. and all the user interface and all that kind of thing like that. So usually what I do is I run the server on that Microvax there, which is a, by today's standards, a modest machine, it's yeah. about six MIPS, and then run for clients. So we've actually had uh, tournaments like Retro Mania in, in in Spain last year, we, we had an actual cash prize pool and we had an actual two versus two tournament. Excellent. So the, the, the Spectrum has now burst onto the eSports scene. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. it's only a few years, three yes. years too yes. late, but never mind. <laughs> but yes, that shows that shows what you, just what you can do once you stick a network on a machine, there's a yeah. whole load more possibilities. Yeah. And you just and, and, and Ethernet would never have been envisaged on the spectrum no. at the time. Yeah. It's funny because Ethernet has just celebrated its 30th anniversary as well. Yeah. Um, there was a there was actually a thing on Reddit on it probably about a month ago with um, the inventor of Ethernet was doing a, a you know, ask me anything on Reddit. Uh, so the the the, the, the 30th anniversary the Ethernet is actually from about the same period as the yeah. spectrum, except Ethernet in those days was not as easy as it is now with category 5 patch cables it used to be the thick yellow color yeah yeah. yeah and of course at the spectrum at the time you know, had the weird interface one networking yeah that's yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah excellent so where can we get more information about this then where's the best place to go there's a uh, there's a website spectrum.elioth.net which is basic the basic documentation for this there's a it's basically a wiki format mm -hmm. and all the source code is available so it's all open source the hardware docs are all there as well. You can browse all the schematics, and so if 
if you really want to make your own, you can, but it's a, actually quite a complex board to make. Yeah. It's, it's a four layer board, so. Yeah. Google's it's probably, Spectrum Spectrum. It's probably easiest yeah. just to buy one off. I think I'll be buying one made. Right <laughs> <laughs> Great, well, thanks for your time, guys. I appreciate that. It's really good, good uh, display you've got here.